Good morning, brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Thank God that we can come into the presence of God this morning together as a church and we can listen to His Word this morning. Today, the sermon title is Waiting Upon the Lord, taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we come before your holy throne this morning. We want to sit at your feet and to listen to your word. Lord, we want to wait upon you. Lord, fill us with your presence. Fill us with your spirit so that, Lord, we may hear your voice speaking to us this morning. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do you like to wait? Many a times we do not like to wait for others. Especially when we have an appointment, we expect everyone to be punctual for the meeting. Or when we order some food, we would not want to wait for too long. We would get very impatient. We often see waiting as a waste of time. We think that it makes us very inefficient. Right? If we spend too much time waiting for this and that, right, then it is very inefficient. And therefore, it becomes ineffective in the way that we do things. So many a times, especially in the Singapore environment, we want everything to be efficient, to be productive, and also to be effective. So whenever we come before our God and the Lord tells us to wait upon Him, sometimes we are very frustrated. Let me tell you what waiting is not first. Waiting is not totally passive. right? According to the Word of God, it doesn't mean that we do nothing. right? It's there is still something that the Lord wants us to do while we are waiting upon the Lord. And so that is what we want to learn today. How can we wait upon the Lord? Today, the passage is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Let me read to you. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Let's look at some background of this passage. Isaiah was written to a despondent people. Right? And because Israel was exiled for some 70 years, and that was a long time, right? To wait for 70 years. Can you imagine? The people actually felt that they had been abandoned by the Lord. The Lord did not really care for them. They not really love them. So they have in a sense given up hope that the God of justice will act. They thought that the Lord had deserted them. So today's passage right, is the Lord's response to this bad theology. To this wrong perspective that these people were holding on. Right? So the Lord wants to bring comfort to his people. Even while they are going through these 70 years in exile, the Lord did not forget them. So what waiting is? Waiting in the biblical perspective is learning to hope in the Lord. Learning to hope in the Lord. 
That's why the word wait can also be translated as hope in the verse today. Right, so it is also a time to acknowledge our limitation, our human limitation, so that we will not be able to boast of our own strength, of our own power, but to acknowledge that we need God. And it is a time also to be disciplined, to be broken and to repent. That's what we can see in the book of Isaiah. This is also a time to seek the Lord for the renewal of strength and direction. So in waiting, we are able to gain back that strength. We are able to find the direction that the Lord wanted us to go in. And it is also a time for God to prepare us for action. Right? So during after that period of waiting, the Lord actually wanted us to arise and to take action for Him. However, waiting can be a long period and it can be a period of dryness as well. Because in those silent moments, sometimes we can feel like God is so distant we may not hear God. So as such, we feel very dry spiritually during those times. And Richard Foster mentioned in his book, Celebration of Discipline, sometimes there is what he called this dark night of the soul, where we feel that, yeah, we are like deserted by God. We are totally left alone in the midst of the whole thing that is happening. We cannot see God. We cannot feel God. We cannot hear God. So th this is like a very dark night. And it's a very long night that we have to go through in our life. Some examples of waiting. We see Joseph. He waited 13 years to be an overseer in Egypt. And you can see that in these 13 years, he has to go through so much, right? Being betrayed by his own brothers and to be in jail for such a long time. You can see that it was a very difficult period for him. However, in those 13 years, he has never complained. He was always positive, even during that period of waiting. And we see Abraham, he waited 25 years for his son Isaac to be born. Right? When God gave him the promise, even to tell him that his descendant will be like stars and like sand, right? But ultimately, to wait for that first and only son, Isaac, was so long. Right? So he has to trust God that he will fulfill his promise. But of course, while waiting, he fumbled. He didn't trust God enough that God will bless him with a son through Sarah. And he went to sleep with Hagar, which brought about a lot of other repercussions. So it tells us that during the, this period of waiting, we really have to trust the Lord. And how about Moses? He spent 40 years in Midian after living in Egypt, right? And he killed someone and he has to run away. 40 years in the desert of Midian before being caught by God through the incident of burning bush. 
So these 40 years was the time that the Lord need to teach him to be patient, not to be so impulsive, not to act on his own accord, right? And to teach him to be humble before the Lord. And the Lord said that he cannot find anyone who is more meek than Moses. And how about Jesus? Jesus waited 30 years before his ministry began. He could have started right away. But God let him wait. He has to live his simple life as a human being to be a carpenter's son, to learn even how to make furniture. Very simple task, menial task on earth before the Lord would use him to begin his ministry. So you can see many people in the Bible all have to wait. So it is also an important thing for us to learn to wait upon the Lord. And there are different types of waiting. It can be an extended period of time, like what we see earlier. A very long period of time. Many years that we go through. Some of us have to go through this very long period of waiting. Even as a church, sometimes we have to go through a very extended period of waiting before the Lord, before the Lord can use the church. And there are also pockets of solitude. Again, Richard Foster in the book Celebration of Discipline, he says it is good for us to look for these pockets of solitude. Meaning that we can look for time, right? Mayhem, but perhaps Sunday afternoon, just a few hours, to go and find a quiet place to seek the face of our God. And these pockets of solitude can be found every now and then. It can be every week. Right. Of course, even the shorter moment is something like our devotion. Our devotion can also be very short pockets of solitude. To spend time reading and praying to the Lord. And there's also the type of waiting. And what Richard Foster, Foster said that it can happen concurrent with our life. This speaks of a kind of posture that we need to adopt in our everyday life. That means that even though we are living a very busy life, he said that subconsciously in our mind, we are still able to maintain a kind of stillness or quietness within us. Uh, that's why many Chinese will say Xin Jing Zi Ran Liang. You know, it says the stillness of our hearts will bring calmness. So this is what Richard Foster was uh, talking about. So while we are very busy in our life, we can be very hectic. In our subconscious mind, we can have that stillness we can still wait upon the Lord. Of course, He also suggests to us there are things that we can practice you know, to slow down our lives. For example, when we walk, learn to appreciate the nature around us. And that is something that I always try to do. Don't rush here, rush there. Last time, I always like to rush it seems like 
uh, time is very precious, you know, and to rush from place to place is a means that I use to save time. However, it doesn't mean that by rushing from place to place make us more effective. In fact, when I learn to slow down my pace of life and learn to appreciate the clouds, the trees, you know, the flowers, the butterflies, the bees, I realize that I can have a clearer mind to think, to analyze. So it can become more fruitful. Right? Or he also suggests like when we are having our meals, slow down. Don't eat too fast. Learn to appreciate the food that we are eating. Thank God for the food as we eat. Right? So things like that, we can inculcate solitude in our life. Right, happening concurrently with the things that we are doing, or it can be a time that is we set apart to seek God. It can be a half an hour, one hour, or a few hours, or it can be a year. Right, there are people who take sabbatical leave just to seek the Lord. Or as I said, there can be an extended period, a very long period of time that the Lord is preparing us. Of course, as I say, it doesn't mean that during that extended period of time, we do nothing. We are letting the God, Lord preparing us, equipping us, training us, right? Just as we see in the earlier cases. So what do we do? when we wait upon the Lord, when we look at the passage today, the first thing that we can do is to remember the nature of God. Remember the nature of God. In verse 28, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired of weary, and His understanding no one can fathom. You can see here from this verse, God was talking or revealing Himself about His nature. He's the everlasting God. He's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. And He is also the Creator. He's the one who gives us life. Whatever that we are going through, whatever things that has, are happening, is in the hands of our Lord. And He says He will not grow tired or weary. He is the God who neither sleeps nor slumber. He will always be attentive to us. He always knows what is happening to us. He knows even the number of hairs on our head and His understanding. He's here is talking about He's a God of wisdom. His wisdom is higher than our wisdom is beyond our comprehension. So He is wise. He knows what He is doing. The second thing that we can do is to trust the power of God. Trust in the power of God. Verse 29, it says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of of the weak, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Here you see the limitation of human. There was a comparison being made right between God and man. Man has his limitation that we are not superman sometimes we always try to be superman we forgot that we can grow tired and weary especially when we are working we work on and on right we want to get things done 
but there's no end to work. Sometimes we get burnt out. We give so much pressure on ourselves. Of course, the our boss also give us that additional pressure, right? And we have to handle many other things, issues in our families, right? So all this add pressure upon us. All the load is upon us. Sometimes with the COVID situation right now, some of us are earning less, some of us lose our job. So that are all pressures. And the Lord says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. All these situations remind us of a sovereign and powerful God. All these situations must remind us of who God is. Let us not be so caught up or trapped in the situation that we are in that we get very despair or dis- depressed. All this situation can point us back to God to remind us that we have a God who can renew our strength in verse 31 it says those who hope in the lord and some translation it says those who wait upon the lord right so as we put our hope in god as we turn to our god he says he will renew our strength israelites will find their strength in God during their period of despair and depression. Many a times we forgot that God is right here for us and we are busy trying to find so many other solutions. Right? People turn to meditations turn to yoga, many other things. But they forgot that we have a God right here who can renew our strength and give us new hope for our life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Yes, in our weakness, we are able to find grace. We are able to experience the power of God. So, brothers and sisters, as we wait upon our God, we need to trust in His power. He will not desert us. And the third thing, while we are waiting, let us experience the presence of God. We want the Lord to touch us. Right? We want it to be very personal to us. In verse 31, the second part of verse 31, it says, They were so on wings like eagles. They will walk and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Right, so it's such a wonderful picture when we see how eagles fly. Right, they can soar. Right, they can glide effort- effortlessly. Why? Because there's the air that lifts them up. So the air push them up so that they can fly or glide without using much strength. And that is what the Lord wants us to do. Can you imagine eagles, such a big, huge bird? And they can glide without flapping their wings. 
right? You can see all those small little birds, they have to flap like mad, right? But eagle, such a huge bird, can glide effortlessly by using the air to pull, lift them up. And in the same way, the Lord, through His Holy Spirit, want to lift us up from our situation such that we will not be stuck, right? We will not be despair in the situation that we are in. He wants to lift us up, to give us hope. He wants us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So during this period of waiting, it is a time when we can experience the presence of God. And when you experience that presence, it says that it, it rejuvenates us, revitalizes us, so that we will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not be faint. Why? Because our heart found new source of strength and hope. When the Lord touch us in our heart, it is very different, my dear brothers and sisters. Sometimes we can sleep so much, you know, we think that when we are tired, we just need to sleep. Yes, by all means, we need to sleep. But sometimes, as I say, after sleeping for a long period of time, we found that we are still so tired. And we realize that actually it's not just that our physical body is tired. But it is our heart that is tired. And when our hearts are tired, it is so difficult to heal. You can go for your favorite movie, you can go for your favorite exercise, you can go for your favorite food. But yet, our heart can still be tired. What we need is the presence of God. What we need is the touch of our God. So let us spend time to wait and let God touch us and fill us with His presence. How can we wait? Firstly, we may need to find a quiet place. Sometimes in a noisy environment, we cannot concentrate. Right? It's like trying to do quiet time before our TV or with the handphone on. Right, so sometimes we need to silence the noise, find a quiet place, and that is just a physical silencing. There is still the internal silencing. Whenever we try to quieten down ourselves, many things will pop up. There'll be things like wow, what we need to do. All the things that we have yet to do will suddenly pop up. And make us very anxious. And in that moment, we would want to rush back to work, you know. So that we can quickly finish our work. During that silencing moment, brothers and sisters, we need to persist when all these things start to pop up. One thing we can do is to write down. Okay, take down all these things that pop up because these are our inner cries. Inner cries. So our heart are crying out, hey, yeah, we need to attend to this, we need to attend to that, we need to get this done and get that done. So sometimes we are afraid that we will forget all these things. So when we are quieting ourselves, all these things start to pop up. So we can jot them down 
and as we jot them down, we can commit them to the Lord. Yes, the Lord will bless us so that we can do all these things later. So, and we continue to let our hearts be still. Right? So, after some time, after jotting all these things down, right? After a moment of time, you, you will realize that there will be less and less things that pop up. And you will be able to enter into a longer period of silence and stillness of our heart. Right? So that is the time that you can properly come before our God. And second thing, we can be guided by God's word. It is good to have the word of God to be our guide. Find a passage, right? If you do not know where to start, you can find Psalms. Psalms is very good for meditation, very good for waiting. So, yeah, we can use Psalms to guide us when we are waiting. It helps us to channel our focus unto God. Right? So, you can, after finding a good place, a still place, right? You can go to your favorite haunt by the seaside or find a corner of your house by the balcony before the starry, starry night, right? Have the word of God before you, right? And look at it after we have silenced our hearts. Look into the word of God and meditate and meditate on the word of God. Right? So Christian meditation is very different from what the world provides. The world's meditation just tells us to empty ourselves. Just get rid of all our thoughts. That is an important process. And just now when we are silencing the noise, we are emptying ourselves. But when we read the word of God, we are feeling ourselves with the Word of God. We need to fill our empty self with the Word of God so that we'll be filled, right? Or else the world stuff is going to come back. Worse still, right? We let other spirit come and tempt us and affect us. So there must be that feeling by the Word of God. And after reading, meditating, we can commune with God. Speak to God. Tell God how you feel, what the passage is telling you. Adore God. Worship God. Right? You can have a time of worship, the singing the songs that you love. Tell, how, tell God how much you love Him. And using the scripture, Let us understand the greatness, the faithfulness of our God. Right? It point us back to God and enable us to tell God how much we want to be with Him, how much we want to be in His presence. So here, communing with God is not just about telling God all our problems, but building that relationship with God. Right? So many a times, we neglected this portion. Whenever we talk about prayer, we, are, we straight away think of all our needs that we need to tell God and expecting God to answer all our needs. Right? So we need to use the time to just adore God and worship God. And that is what a relationship is. Just like, you know, a relationship between a boyfriend or girlfriend or between husband and wife. Or just between good friends. You don't go and tell your good friends just everything that you want, right? You talk about many other things. Just sharing 
and opening up your hearts to God. Many a times we miss out this experience with God. And reading the Word of God becomes a, an intellectual exercise. No, that's not what it should be. Reading of God is an intimate moment with our God. So if we change that perspective, then the Holy Spirit will help us to experience the presence of God as we commune with Him. And also, during this moment as we commune with Him, yes, take note of whatever impressions or thoughts that the Lord is speaking to us. Right? So, that's what people call sanctified thoughts. That's the inner voice that God put in us. You know, you may not hear the audible voice like, like human beings. Right? But there is that inner impressions God can also reveal to us through even impressions that happen in the day or certain encounter or certain things or episodes that happen in your life. And God used those things to speak to us, to remind us how faithful He is or reveal to us how we can solve the challenges that we are facing. So you can see, when we commune with God, it is a two-way thing. It is not just one way. Right? So we need to learn how to wait upon God. So don't just come to God like a routine. Oh yes, I need to do quiet time and just read and then just present to God a list of things that we want. No. Right? The focus of waiting is coming back to God. Is experiencing our God. So brothers and sisters, let us learn how to wait upon Him. Right? So do you have a heart to wait, how do we see waiting? Many people do not like to spend time waiting upon God. They see it as a waste of time because when time is so little, so short, right? they want to quickly get back to work. But I tell you, waiting can improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of our work and that's what I have experienced myself so it's not redundant it's not a waste of time so are we willing to wait upon the Lord to let the Lord teach us renew us or sometimes in the time of repentance even right when there are times when God to break us down so that we may be transformed by Him so let the wasting time not be wasted because it is a time where we can really silence ourselves and direct our focus back to the Word of God. We can direct our eyes, direct our hearts back to God so that there is a time of communing with our God through prayer and through listening to Him. Right? And there will be that renewal in us so that we can trust God more and more. And we're going to experience His power and His refreshment that comes from His presence. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank You, Lord, that you are a God who wants to dwell in us. 
You are not a God who stays far, far away, who do not care about us. But you are a God who loves us and wants to be involved in our lives. So Lord, today, teach us and help us to wait upon you, to seek your face. So that allow us to adore and to worship you so that we can experience your power, to experience your presence. Lord, I commit every one of us here to you, O oh Lord, especially in this very busy and hectic society that we are in. Help us to put things aside and be able to devote our time and our lives to you, Lord. We give you thanks. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.